there's a big general problem of the relationship between private wealth and public power. That uh, that's a very important issue for any democratic government to be concerned about, and that can take the form sometimes of outright purchase of votes. You know, people just paying for votes, uh, uh, paying like a bribe to get someone to to uh, support you, um, and that happens in some circumstances. But of course, the more subtle or the more complicated situations are where there's not a direct quid pro quo of money for votes. But what money is doing is paying for advertisements, um, and sometimes, as we've seen in the last U.S. election, very sneaky, underhand hacking kind of. Uh, you know, this overlaps with your interest in artificial intelligence. The uh, possibility of, of the downside of all the uh, access to the media that people people have, uh, and uh, that being used as a way of of trying to to. Um, provide misinformation or provide biased information going, going forward. Well, I think transparency is a, a, which can mean many things, but transparency is a kind of a necessary but not sufficient. You can just say, everybody ought to know things, um, but know things why, know things so that they can hold uh, politicians and bureaucrats to account. If all that happens is they just know things, for example, suppose they learn that there's a lot of corruption in the system in which they operate, that can simply make them cynics, uh, very distrustful of any kind of political system because look how rotten it all is. Right? Um, so it's got to go along with um, constructive proposals about how to make things less corrupt or, or giving people some feeling of efficacy and being able to elect um, candidates who are not themselves, who are credibly not themselves uh, corrupt, a report, make reports on, on um, bribe uh, transactions that they feel are going to be taken up with and, 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 um, and uh, have, an, have, an, have an effect on the, um, have an effect on the operation of government. Well, I guess the first point is that it's always going to be difficult to do, to, to get an accurate measure of corruption at its cost, because it is a transaction that people are trying to keep secret. Um, and um, so that um, there may be lots of corrupt transactions that we don't know anything about. And all we may only see some of the costs and not know what the origin is. That there have been some efforts um, to measure corruption. Um, as you know, there is a perceptions index from Transparency International and a similar one from the World Bank. Um, to me, those measures are, are too general. They give, you something, they give you some sense of the range of, of problem across the world, but they're, they're also not, they're not tied to any um, policy that would necessarily make something worse or, worse or better. It's just kind of a start of a discussion, as far as I'm concerned. Um, to me, the more important ways of thinking about measuring it are to disaggregate the problem into, into look at particular sectors, particular parts of countries, look at urban areas and rural areas, um, look at the way it, it, it may function in, in procurement, certain kinds of, of government uh, procurement and in the provision of, 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 of services, and that it needs to be attacked not just as a attempt to raise people's ethical standards, which is fine, that's like transparency, it's like a, a, a a good thing to do, but it will not will get you anywhere unless you concretely think about about what the problems are. History is not destiny, or culture. A present day culture is not written in stone. <laughs> um, uh, it can be a um, uh, an explanation, but not a justification. Uh, in other words, a, a, a reason why people do things. But um, but there have been plenty of cases where people have where culture has changed over time. Think outside the corruption area about what's happened to smoking. Um, there's been a huge cultural change, in, and this is an addictive 
have it. <laughs> a huge change in how much of that happens and, and where it is it can take place, right? Um, um, which is for me a relatively hopeful, I mean, it took a while, you know, recycling, we're doing this a lot in the US, Th things that, that are a certain kinds of environmental sen sen sensitivities. Um, and um, so, that, um, so that I think cultural change can happen. Um, uh, we, we shouldn't, it shouldn't be taken as a reason why the way things are have to keep going. Of course, you, it could be used as a justification. Right? Somebody might say, well, that's just the way we do things. We just love our families, so we try to help our families. And that's, that's not corrupt. We're just helping our families. Well, have a debate about that. If that's true, I mean, if people really think that, that it's OK you know, for a, a government to be engaged in all kinds of what we would call nep nep hiring their brothers and sisters to do things, fine, then that's, that's their society. But you shouldn't call it corrupt. But if you think, well, maybe that's a problem with the entry of, of, of other kinds of people who do not have those connections into getting certain kinds of jobs, well, that's a political debate that you should have. Well, I mean, conflict of interest is one of these broad terms that can cover a lot of things. But it's essentially meaning that you've got some kind of private financial interest that is um, inconsistent with the um, impartial execution of your public, public role. Um, and we can worry about how strict that ought to be. Right? So I think, the, for me, one issue is not making it is, is being careful not to make the restrictions so strict that you make it impossible for people in the private sector who have some kind of knowledge of a particular regulatory area or government area to actually serve in in, in, in government um, and um, uh, because then you're losing some certain level of competence of people who might otherwise serve serve in government. Uh, on the other hand, there certainly can be cases in which you know somebody is both a major contractor and if, if somebody who's a major contractor or their family is a major contractor um, takes a position, say, as minister of transport you know, or in some job that's so closely related to the financial interests of their family, um, um, it seems to me ought to be, uh, uh, there ought to be rules that are preventing that from, from, uh, from, uh, from, 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 from happening. It could be a phenomena in which corruption starts out relatively small and then it grows and grows, right? That it builds on itself. You have a vicious cycle, all right, in which some people are corrupt and then other people say, hmm, those people are corrupt. I guess it's not so bad to be corrupt, so I'll be corrupt too. And then another group of people say, okay, I'll be corrupt, so it can, it can be a vicious cycle. And those, that kind of a phenomena is pretty easy to uh, think about, about, about happening. And if you're in that kind of vicious cycle, it means that reform has got to be fairly serious. You can't just reform a little bit or it'll just go back again. Well, I think it's certainly, um, it is not a problem that's going to go away. Right? As, as long as there is some, there's some excess economic rents in the, way in which the state provides services, it's going to be there. Um, I think it, there has been a, certainly an increase of concern about it, and, and I think some progress in some countries. Um, I think the, um, the uh, OECD Anti-Corruption Convention, has, which has builds on a US statute, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, has actually had an impact on the way in which multinational businesses operate. Um, in terms of making them personally worried about it. Right? In other words, not able to say, oh, I have to pay bribes in Africa because everybody does it. Right? Oh, oh, it's not an excuse anymore. <laughs> and, um, and to the extent you can have a virtuous cycle, that, 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 could, that could happen. So I wouldn't say I'm optimistic, or I would say I'm cautiously optimistic. That I think that there can be, there have been and have been some changes. Um, um, but then you can get a, you know, a, a, a particular country that gets uh, overtaken by, um, uh, by, by corruption for, for a while. These, are, these, are, these are, are situations in which you have progress, you know, two steps forward, one step back, and you hope you keep, it keeps going. But 
and isn't isn't a guarantee. Yeah. 